A lot of people have been asking for a tutorial on how to make sound fonts. So that's what we're gonna do today. This is how you make your own sound font. First, download this program called Polyphone, which is a free sound font editing software. As you can see, I've already downloaded it a couple of times. Next, you need some samples. Even just one sample will do, uh, and it's gotta be in the .wav format. If you don't have any samples, I will bundle these samples in a zip file that you can download in the description. So once you have Polyphone installed and you have your samples either legally downloaded or uh, recorded yourself, then just open Polyphone and we'll click new sound font. We'll grab our samples and we'll drop them right under the samples tab here. If your samples are in stereo, they will be separated. Each one will be separated into left and right. If your sample has an embedded loop point, you'll be able to see it here. The loop starts at the green line and ends at the red line. Just like that. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make an instrument. So I will take all of these and highlight them by control clicking. And then I'll click this speaker up here to add an instrument. And we'll just call it example. Then once you have it, then you have to set the proper root notes for each of your samples. As you can see, the left and rights are panned. The left one is panned 50% left, the right is panned 50% right. That just means that your stereo sample is in stereo. So now we're going to set the root key for each of them. Uh, the easy way to find this out is to have a keyboard in front of you or maybe open up a YouTube video that has a middle C or something. In this case, C4 is one octave below middle C, so I'm going to make it 48. And for key range, for the moment, I'll also make this 48. C5 will be our middle C, even though middle C is C4. It's C5 in FL Studio because FL's weird. It's already 60. We'll just make it, we'll just put the 60 in there anyway. And we'll make that 60. And then this one is one octave higher, C6. Root key is 72. So now, those three keys are all activated but none of the other keys are activated yet. So we have to set the key range. And as you may have noticed, the if you whatever you change in the left of a sample is automatically changed in the right of the sample. So you don't have to necessarily do the left and right for each sample. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna go change the, the key range of the lowest one so that it starts at zero. That's the very bottom of the keyboard. And since our next sample is 60, which is a full octave away from 48. I'll put about an extra six in here. So this will be 54. And then this can start at 55. Then 60 is the root for it. Then we'll make that 66. And then up here, we wanna start our next key on the very next note after the highest key of our previous sample, since they're in order of pitch. So we'll have this start on 67, and instead of, instead of going to 72 or something, we'll just do 127, which is the highest key on the keyboard. So now we should have a working instrument. This right here is our loop function. If we choose the straight line, it will not loop, it will just stop when it gets to the end of the sample but we want it to loop, so we're gonna use this. Great. Another thing that we need to look at is our ADHSR. That's attack, I'm sorry, delay, attack, hold, decay, sustain. We're not gonna bother with delay because delay just means delay. It will just take longer for it to make sound when we press a key, which we, we don't have any need for that just yet. Attack is basically a fade in. Do we want it to fade in when we press a key, or do we want it to be instant? By default, it's instant. Unless the sample already has a fade in built into it. So for attack, let's try adding, make it a two. And you can see that I'm working under global here, so whatever I do in here affects all of the samples in this instrument. So now you can hear that the that when you turn the attack up, it creates a fade in, and the fade in will be longer the higher the attack is. We're gonna leave this at zero because I like that sharp attack, just like that. Next thing we can mess with is hold, decay, and sustain. 
Hold, decay, and sustain will basically determine if the, the sound fades out while the key is being pressed. So we'll start by making the sustain 100. We'll call the decay 14. And we'll leave hold blank. You can hear how that faded out as I was still holding the key. Without letting the key up, it's fading out. This is good if you're if you're doing something like a piano or a guitar, because those sounds, when you strum a guitar and leave it go, eventually the sound will peter out and become silent, right? So I'm going to make this even shorter, like the decay, like a four. How about even shorter? Two. Not bad, right? Okay. So now we know that when we hold the key down, it will fade out. And it'll fade out pretty quickly because we have it at such a low number. Now we have the, re the release. Release is how long it takes for the sound to return to silence after you've let go of the key. Right now, it's blank, so it goes silent the second you release the key. Generally speaking, you never want this to be blank, because what happens is you'll get an artifacting sound where when you release a key, um, especially on a sustained instrument, where you'll hear a pop. So in order to avoid that pop, I suggest making this at least like 0.1. If you want it to trail out a little more, you can make it a, a whole number like one. I like that. In here, you'll see your instrument. We've called it example. So now what we want to do is we want to, with it highlighted, click the musical notes up here to add a preset. We'll call it example. The preset is what you're actually using when you're using a sound font. In most softwares that you use, the instruments are actually hidden behind the presets. So the presets are what you'll use when you're making music. So now we have this preset called example. And then we will open up FL Studio. And with FL Studio open, well, you don't actually have to be using FL Studio. You might be using a different DAW, but I'm using FL Studio. So this is how you do it in the most recent FL 2024. So I'm just going to find my sound font here in the browser. And I'm just going to drag it and drop it right here into FL Studio. And there it is. And just like that, we've got a sound font. Let's hear it in action. There you go. Now you have the power to make your own sound font. Alternatively, you can just download some of my free sound fonts. And if you have Polyphone, you can even open them up and dissect them and extract the samples and use them however you want. It's all totally free. Also, please consider joining the Patreon for unique perks and special stuff just for you. Thanks for watching. Bye.